here and you people in the audience is going to be interactive. But we have for the panelists who are seated here, I want to introduce them. On my right is uh, Brother Godfrey, and then uh, me, Simon Shiveka, this Godfrey, Asenbeka, right? And then there is Brother Pastor Thomas Amiti from Uganda, and then we have a young pastor here, uh, Brother Onesmus Kipruto. So we have, uh, we, we want to begin with uh, this panel, which is a discussion. We believe it's going to be another part of the world that will be able to capture the man. Some of these things are going to make you to think, because we're also thinking at the same time. So we are today speaking on the two salvations, plural. Uh, the subject matter is the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. So we have three questions here that we want our brothers to cover with us. And then we may receive uh, some few questions from the audience. Uh, something that is either has been triggered by what is going to be discussed here and the scriptures that are going to be spoken. And perhaps someone has a scripture that wants to, be, to be illuminated or enlightened upon. We have, we have three questions here that are going to cover what we want to call the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. But we don't want to pull away from our subject matter, which is the two salvations. Question number one says this. And uh, we are going to begin with Brother Godfrey responding. It says, we have heard you preach like there are two Gospels. Can you support that by the scriptures? This is a question that has been asked. That we've heard you preach like there are two Gospels. Can you support that by the scriptures? That's question number one. Then question number two. If the Savior is one, why would there be two Gospels or two salvations for that matter? Because from the two Gospels we get two salvations. Then question number three. Which Gospel did Jesus preach as by the Scriptures? Very fast. We have heard you preach that there are, like there are two Gospels. Can you support that by the scriptures? Question number two. If the Savior is one, why would there be two Gospels? Question number three. Which Gospel did Jesus preach as by the scripture? Brother Godfrey, you tell us we are moving from you and then we go to Brother Onesmus, come to Pastor Tom. As we, build, we are not building consensus we are having fellowship. We're just dealing with the scriptures. What do the scriptures say right here? And we have a right to understand what the scripture says. It's, it is our, our heritage. Amen? Yeah. So, Brother Gulf, tell us. I don't know. You, you are beginning with the number one? Perhaps. We have heard you preach like there are two gospels. Can you support that by the scriptures? That was directed to me. But I want us to share all that. Yeah. I think, <coughs> is the voice okay? Yeah, it is. The voice is good. Okay. I think the one who asked the question is not wrong. And uh, we have to support it by the scriptures by saying this. Because by one asking, we have heard you preach like there are two Gospels. Actually, there are two Gospels in the Bible because I believe what Jesus preached or what the apostles that Jesus commissioned is not the same that Paul and Barnabas and the rest of the apostles of uncircumcision preached is the same. And when uh, guys work on the south, okay, because <clears throat> whatever Paul presented was different from what Peter and the rest the apostles of circumcision presented. Perhaps you need to go to the scriptures because uh, that's the question. Yeah, because the scripture. I have to support it by the scripture in the book of Galatians chapter 2 where Paul says, but some of these good things. Does your audience have, uh, do you people have your Bibles with you? You have it. So, Brother Godfrey is uh, 
calling our attention to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 verse 6 to 8 says, But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. But God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrawise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of circumcision was unto Peter, he that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostleship of circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. Is that what your Bible say? Or there is something he left out? Yeah, from the scripture above, it is clearly telling us there are two gospels. One that was preached by the apostles of circumcision, Peter and the rest of the group, and another gospel preached by Paul, which is the gospel of circumcision. That is why I'm supporting and saying these are two gospels. Wow, Brother Godfrey is giving us the scripture. Perhaps if you go back to that scripture, it says, But the Conroe wise, when they saw that the gospel of uncircumcision was committed to me as the gospel of the circumcision to Peter. So that tells us the how many gospels here? So it means that actually two gospels. That's what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, so Brother Godfrey is as giving us a scripture because the question was, can you supply us with the scriptures that they say there are two gospels. Well, as we develop this idea, Brother Godfrey, you'll still come back to that. Yeah. You'll still come back to that. Brother Onesimus, would you want to still continue with uh, what Brother Godfrey has said? Or uh, you want to go to question number two? If the Savior is one, why would there be two gospels? Number one, Brother Godfrey has actually shown us that there are actually two Gospels. The Gospel of Circumcision and Uncircumcision, right? So this one just goes together with the question number two. If the Savior is one, why would there be two Gospels? Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, we just supply with sound. Don't worry, these things are, they, sometimes they, yes. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Or good afternoon. Are you okay? Yeah. yeah so uh, I'd like to add on what Godfrey has said concerning if there are two Gospels in the Bible before uh, I pass it on back. Though I'd like to read Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6 where Paul says, mm -hmm. I marvel that ye are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Jesus Christ into another Gospel. Wow. Already that tells you there was another gospel. So even without going to the details, in that scripture alone, Paul recognized there were two gospels. And when now you go back uh, in the beginning of the gospels now from Matthew, the beginning of the book of Matthew. Just before you go there, let me just cut you short. Yes. So the one that gospel, the, the one Paul is saying that uh, people had moved, not just moving on, Yes. they had moved into another gospel. Could it have been a seven gospel? But, but of course, maybe you need to tell us uh -huh. what the word gospel means. Yes. Gospel means good news, good tidings. Okay. And uh, So they had gone to some good tidings. It was a good tidings. But <laughs> okay. it was not good tidings for them. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good news meant different things to different people. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's good. For a Jew, good news meant something else. Mm -hmm. And for the Gentiles, good news meant something else. Yes. For when a Gentile heard of good news, which actually is the gospel, is what came through Paul. And now the another gospel that Paul is talking about here is a gospel that existed even before Paul came, even before the cross. And uh, that, I believe, with time we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Okay, you've already booked uh, uh, a slot, isn't it? Yes. So you're saying there is where the gospel began. 
So there is where Paul began when he was telling the people you have moved into another good tidings. So I don't know whether Brother Tom you want to does Tom you want to still deal with question number one or two? Or you want us to move to which gospel did Jesus preach as per the scripture? So I think, Brother Onesimus, you've left something hanging. If the Savior is one, why would there be two gospels? Okay. If the Savior is one, why would there be two gospels? And uh, Jesus as a Savior, as you all recognize it, is a universal truth. Uh -huh. And when you say a universal truth, it means something that uh, is... Objective truth. Yeah. You know, objective truth is like the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, whether you like it or it doesn't depend on the moods. So that's what you're saying, universal, right? Yes. Okay. So if the Savior is one, why will there be two Gospels? So, so you have to go back to to why Jesus came. And when Jesus was coming, preaching the good news, which is now the gospel, he did not come to every person. He came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came to his brothers. Are we together up to that moment? Do you know there are scriptures of the, concerning the same? He that gave his life for his friends, for his brethren, is that true? And who are the brothers of Jesus Christ? We realize they were the Jews, is that true? So if Jesus came, for the Jews, that is, he came as a savior to them. Did they need salvation? So they were lost. Is that true? Were they in their promised land? Had they achieved all the promises? Did the Jews achieve all the promises at that time? So they needed a savior. Is that true? So when Jesus came to them, were the mind, were the Gentiles? That's a good one. That's a really, really good one. But I want you to focus on another audience that is not these people. You so when you say, is that true? Someone is like, is hearing it for the first time. Yes. So just uh, have in your mind two audiences. Yes. Yeah, but you're doing very well. You are, we appreciate what brother is actually saying. Yes. That he's saying that there was a salvation that was directed to the Jews. You want to tell us there was no another person that was considered? Yes. Okay, tell us. Okay, when you go, to, when Jesus now began preaching the good news, the gospel, we realized there was a woman called the Sorphenician woman that came in Matthew 15. This woman wanted to access a blessing from God. And uh, Jesus told her, I cannot take the children's bread and give it to dogs. Which actually, when Jesus was coming, he was a ransom for, some, for many. You remember what pastor told us? So when you read Matthew 15, Jesus identifies that there were people that were secluded from that gospel. At that time when Jesus was, when the Seraphonician woman tried to access the blessing, he could not access it. But Jesus says that I came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Wow, you've told us that the salvation that Jesus is offering is universal truth. Yeah. But it looks like uh, this salvation was limited, right? It was limited. It was limited to a group of people. Yes, it was. So it means... We are not Jews. We wouldn't be saved at that time? We wouldn't. Be, we could be saved, but through the Israel. Okay, you'll come back to that. Yeah. We are going back to, let's go to Brother Pastor Tom. Just hold your finger because I think there is so much you need to tell us. And Brother Godfrey, as we develop, the, we develop this picture. Brother Tom, I don't know whether you are dealing with which gospel did Jesus preach or you still go back to, which we are, we, we are doing well. You could still go back to question number two, add something. And question number one, or you could jump, or you could approach it from any other uncle, but uh, we could just keep us in the same channel. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Simon Shiveka. Uh, you know, I want to to a little bit speak on uh, question number three because question number one and two, my two brothers have at least hinted something, but we'll go round about again. But I want to speak on question number three. Which gospel did Jesus, Jesus preach as per the scriptures? Number one, oh, we needed to know the background that uh, 
Israel at one point of time were held captive in the days of King Nebuchadnezzar. That is way back in the Old Testament. And all through the time, Israel was looking forward for a kingdom. They were looking forward for a kingdom. And uh, a Messiah was promised unto them. And when Jesus appeared on the earth, they expected that they are going to receive back their kingdom. Okay. So Jesus preached to them the gospel of the kingdom. Right. And when you go to the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 4, uh, verse 23, and several other scriptures, but we limit ourselves to some few. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Oh, Brother Tom, that's the first time the word, the gospel, of is appearing in the Bible. The first time. The person who has it is Jesus. Yeah, good. Yes, and healing all man of sickness and all man of diseases among the people. So we find out here that the gospel that Jesus preached was the gospel of the kingdom, Amen. which was different from the other gospel which my brothers have already talked to you in question one and question two. Jesus specifically preached the gospel of the kingdom and that is the only gospel that he preached. He never deviated, he never changed in his gospel. I don't know if my audience gets this. The pastor is telling us the only gospel Jesus preached. In other words, even if we, so let's not blame our age that we are young. If we were there, it looks like it wouldn't help us, right? It wouldn't help us if we were there. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't help us. And if if we were there at that time, mm -hmm. the only thing we would, have, we would do is to be able to lean to the Jews. To go by what the Jews are, are, are going with. And that's the only way we would be able to be saved at that time. But now, God you know, knows the end from the beginning. So he made us to come at this particular time. Mm -hmm. So when we look at what happened under that gospel, healing of all manners of sickness, fame, went up to different parts of the world. But this was for a purpose. This was for a purpose. Because this healing was actually to announce the presence of the king is within. Wow. Oh, so this king... It was only just a claim. It was not just a claim. There were some works to go to announce, hey, yes. he's right, he has arrived. Exactly. Good. Because even among the teachers of that day, there were certain types of signs which they were expecting. And those were the signs of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. They were expecting some of those signs. What does the Messiah mean? The, 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 the Messiah? The word Messiah. Uh can be anointed one. It can be uh, because when you go in the scripture, you find somewhere where he performed the sign, and the people said, "Isn't this the son of David?" Wow! So Brother Tom is building to us something that there was an expectation in Israel, and he, there is a certain thing he, he did. He said, "Where well, is it found, Brother Godfrey or Brother Ensmus?" It's in the book of Matthew chapter 12. So he did a miracle. Yes. And people are like, this could be the son of David. David. So we couldn't even do that ourselves because we were not expecting exactly. that. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And when they ask, is, could indeed be the son of David? And when we talk about the son of David, it is connected with the kingship. Uh -huh. Maybe brother, as he's speaking, give us that scripture somewhere. Yes. It is connected with the kingship. Praise the Lord. Mm. So here we see that Jesus had to perform some signs which he performed healing the people who are not Jews. And then there are signs which were very particular to mm -hmm. the Jews so that they may be able to catch yeah that here is the Messiah. This is our King. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that limited him now to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Aha. Uh -huh. He had to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Mm. 
And that's why you find the gospel of the kingdom, when you preach that gospel of the kingdom, there are people who are able to receive among the Jews. And then when the Gentiles also came in and they wanted to receive that message, it couldn't be practical. And then we find out that one in the book of Mark chapter 7. And Mark verse, chapter 7. Verse 26. Uh, verse 26. Maybe you can read for us what you are looking for. Read. Yes. Yeah. The, the woman uh, let, let me take my scripture here. Mark. So, brother, Pastor Tom is sending us to Mark chapter 7, seven to build up this thought. We are developing a thought that this salvation was not the salvation of the Gentiles. was specifically for Israel. In verse 25, it said, For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a, a Greek. Mm -hmm. A Syrophoenician by nation and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her but Jesus said unto her let the children first be filled for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto dogs so there was bread that Jesus was serving but it was not bread for everybody no. or everyone it, it was, was only for the children. It was so genders were not children at this time. No. I hope you are getting what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Gentiles were not children at this time. Gentiles were actually dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we remember he called them dogs. I think Mark 7 has also a parallel in Matthew 15. I think Matthew 15 is where she's called a dog. She didn't refuse. I she did not. Okay. <laughs> she did not. She did not. So, the woman answered. When you look at Matthew 15 mm -hmm. and verse 24 to 26, but he answered and said, No, this is not the scripture. The, the, the same Mark, when you go to Mark, Mark 7, 28, and she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yes, the dogs under the table eat of children's crumbs and he said unto her for this saying go thy way the devil is going out of thy daughter and when she was come to her house she found the devil gone out of her daughter laid upon her bed so you find here that when jesus dealt with this woman who was a greek it ended there at the healing of the daughter of this woman and that was all there was nothing much that Jesus continued to speak with this woman as far as the gospel was concerned. Because the gospel was for the, for the Jew, which was the gospel of the kingdom. He couldn't minister the gospel of the kingdom to this woman, but he performed the healing for her. And that was enough. Mm -hmm. So this woman, as much as he received a miracle from Jesus, she did not receive the gospel of the kingdom now. But she received something she called a cramp that fell from the, from the table. So Jesus never did anything to her. No. He was restricted. Yeah. Wow. So when we say Jesus is the savior of the world, we must study the scriptures. Right? You want to read us a scripture or you'll forget what you want to say? No, I wanted to finish. What yeah, I, finish that. Yeah, I wanted to read the book of Matthew. Yes. Uh, chapter 15 yes. from verse 24 to 26 but he answered and said I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel and then came she and washed him saying Lord help me but he answered him and said it's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs You want me to let me? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Brother Nesmas, you have your place? We don't want to leave anybody behind. We just want to go together. Okay. The scripture I'm reading yeah. is connected to what uh, Brother Thomas said. Yeah. Concerning when the king comes and when he's announcing his presence. Yeah. And the signs that he was doing. Wow. That's and, nice. Uh, 
people had some confessions when they saw the signs that Jesus was doing and uh, after he healed a, 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 a demon possessed person yes in Matthew chapter 12 from verse 23 yes all the people all the people were amazed were amazed that is Matthew 12:23 They have never been amazed before, isn't it? They've never been amazed. But there is a particular thing he did and they were amazed. They were amazed. Yes. And they said, is not this the son of David? The audience that is visible. These people are going to a particular tribe in Israel. I say, uh, isn't this the son of David? The son. They are going to a certain house in the tribe of Judah. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, and then uh, that is what went for, and then the Pharisees started doubting. Yes, started doubting that, and you realize that comes from what they expected the Messiah would do. And uh, as 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 our brother was sharing, yes, they knew the Messiah would perform certain things. Uh -huh. And there were one, the Messiah was supposed to be from the house of David, mm -hmm. from the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. Number two, he was supposed to be a king that was going to save them. Mm -hmm. Number three, he was supposed to be born in Bethlehem. Uh -huh. All those things were the things they should mark to understand. He was supposed to be born in Bethlehem. In Bethlehem. From the tribe of Judah. The house, tribe of Judah, the house of David. The house of David. So it means the Jews were on the lookout. Yeah. So if such a Jesus came to us as Gentiles, mm -hmm. we had no way of vetting him. We did not have anything that we did not have any basis of evaluating this man. We would not have any basis because we didn't have a promise. Yeah. So Jesus would come, we say he's a king. Another person comes, he says, because we have nothing, we are not under expectation. Yes, but you realize even the woman at the well knew something. The woman at the well, because she was a Samaritan. Yeah, they say, we, we know when he comes, mm. these things will happen. So they, they had expectations when Jesus Messiah comes. Brother Onesimus, you are telling us that what is written in John chapter 4? Yes. Uh -huh. And again, in the same John, you realize it says salvation is for the Jews again. Oh, do you have that scripture with you? It is John chapter, John chapter 4. So you are still building on question number one. Yes. That there are two gospels. So there is one gospel and there is one salvation that is restricted to the Jews. Yes. And Jesus is proudly saying, hey, salvation doesn't even belong to you, the Samaritan. Mm -hmm. And Jews, does it mean Israel? Jews, as far as that text was concerned, it meant the tribe of Judah. Did okay. you hear that? So the word Jews has been used interchangeably to mean Israel, yeah. but for this context, it meant Judah. the house of Judah. Yeah. They were called Jews when they came from Babylon. Yes. And uh, the ten tribes is what were called the Sama. The Samaritan. the Samaritan from where this woman came from. Yeah. So it means salvation was even just for the house. And Jesus was proudly saying, it belongs to the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now leave alone the Gentiles. The Samaritan would not claim. <laughs> But then the woman goes back in the east and says, no, we know when he cometh. So they were under expectation. Continue. Are you finishing? We can't come to brother, brother Tom. We shall, we shall just still come. Yes, I wanted us to go to the book of Matthew still. Matthew. Uh -huh. And then we begin to read from verse 21. Matthew, the same place? Yes, Matthew 22, Matthew 15, 22. Mm -hmm. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same courts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, yeah. thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Mm -hmm. And in verse 23, he answered her not a word. Mm -hmm. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. So you find here that uh, Jesus had a gospel which was for the gospel of the kingdom which was specifically addressed to the Jews. Now, this woman is coming to address the Lord Jesus Christ and calling him mm -hmm. son of David. David. And Jesus couldn't respond to that. You mean he did not even say anything? No. Mm -hmm. he, he answered him not a word. Nothing. <coughs> so a woman respond. has a need 
There is a person here who can minister to our need, but the man is restricted. Because if he went away ahead and ministered to this woman, <laughs> then it would break uh, the scriptures. He had to keep quiet until the disciples even said, send her away. away. Mm. Yeah. But then he answered and said, I'm not sent to the house of Israel. Okay. Then came she and worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. That is when now he answered. You remember previously here he said, Lord, oh Lord, thou son of David. Jesus did not answer. So she needed to remove the word son of David. He had to remove the word. the son of David was the promised king. king. The Messiah, the anointed. Exactly. So when she removed something, changed a little bit. Exactly. Wow. And I'm looking for a time when the whole thing changes. That she can be lifted from under the table. <laughs> and then she sits on the table and can feed. Not being a dog. So now... Then Jesus, uh, verse 26, but he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and cast to the dog. And she said, Tooth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. faith. Be unto thee, even as thou will. Because this woman mm. now could not continue calling him son of David. David. So you find here again the woman said, okay, even if I'm a dog, but Lord, you know, even the, 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 the dogs eat from the crumbs. Because he had dressed her properly, I mean addressed him properly, and now Jesus had to respond, and the woman received her healing. And when we continue to read the scripture, it is stopped there. Jesus did not minister to her any other thing as far as salvation is is concerned mm. but the needs of her healing she got it i'll wow. stop there for a while for a while that's really good that one is reminding me a story about someone called patimayo patimayo was not a gentile he was a jew but like bajona so this was the son of timayo he came and used the same address yes. son of david have mercy upon me and Jesus never called Patimayo a dog. What would have happened if he did? Definitely, Jesus couldn't. <laughs> he couldn't. Yeah, yes. He, he couldn't have called Patimayo a dog. Because he was one of the children to be served. Exactly. Wow. So we are coming to, uh, to understand the gospel of the kingdom was the bread. And this bread was only being served for the children, like perhaps if you are in a house, you have, uh, I have in this house a, a, a small pet called Sushi. And we have another one called uh, Scoopy. So I have dogs and I've got children. But all these dogs and the children belong to the same house. But now the dog must wait for the children to eat first. Do you think, that's a question for you to think about. Will this dog remain a dog? Yes, if nothing happens to the gospel, there will be children and dogs. But if something happens to this gospel, it will change the status of the dogs. And that is one of the greatest miracles that perhaps you are going to, to look into. Okay, let me just give a little contribution of this. Uh, I want to look at uh, some three restrictions of Jesus Christ that shows even if we Gentiles were there, there isn't much you could do. Number one, we've actually said that in Matthew chapter 4 is the first time the word, the gospel of the kingdom was mentioned. And Jesus Christ was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Let me just go back to what Brother Onesimus has said. He said the word gospel means good news. What would be the good news for Israel? The king has come. And did they just come from nowhere to start calling for a king or it was a promise? If it was a promise, then that is the only way we can exclude ourselves. Now we go to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter... Um, Chapter 15, Brother Godfrey. 
15 verse 6. We, we, we want to trace together where this thing called the kingdom originated from. And when the news comes that the king has come, it becomes good news, which is now the gospel of the kingdom, or the good news of the kingdom. Prodigal, maybe you could read from there. Yeah, in Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 6, the Bible says this. For the Lord thy God blesses thee, as he has promised thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow, and thou shalt read... Who is the thou there? Israel. So it is Israel God is speaking to. Yes. And then there is a word we are looking for right there. Yeah. And thou shalt reign over many nations. What does the word reign mean? Have dominion. They are going to have a king. Kingdom. And the kingdom they will be they will be reigning over nations. Over nations. Yeah. So this is the first time, perhaps the second time, that we see the children of Israel have been promised a kingdom. Are we together so far? If they are, they are promised a kingdom, they needed to wait for that kingdom. When the king of that kingdom comes, it becomes good news. Amen. It becomes now the good news. Now this has nothing to do with salvation from sins. It is the promised king has come. Now when we find in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, you shall reign over nations. But then when we go to the book of Exodus, Chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. God tells them, If you obey my voice, you will be a peculiar people unto me, a treasure above all the nations, and you will be a kingdom of priests. So God promised them a kingdom. Right? And then when he tells them they are going to be a kingdom, in Deuteronomy, he enlarges the picture. He says, you know, you only have a kingdom. You will reign over the nations. Then, maybe we need to read 2 Samuel chapter 2, chapter 7, verse 13 to 16. Brother Godfrey, you are of a great help to me. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 13 to 16. Brother Tom, I like what you've said, and Brother Onesimus. You've said there were special things that Jesus needed to do to say, hey, the kingdom is here. Yeah. So Jesus was not wrong to say, the kingdom of God is at hand. But the first person who said that was John. Repent, for the kingdom of God is That was Matthew chapter 3. Then in Matthew chapter 4, repent, for the kingdom of God. But now verse 23 says, and Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. So the gospel of the kingdom was the king is here and the kingdom is here. So they didn't re reject Jesus as someone was going to save them from the life of sin. But they rejected the king. That was the gospel. God forbid, read, read for me. There is something I want to send before yes, I take it back to you. Second Samuel 7 verse 13. Yes. And he shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now, in 2 Samuel, God has not only generally promised Israel a kingdom. He has gone to a specific house. The house of who? David. So that's the reason why Jesus becomes the son of who? The son of David. So it wasn't just any tribe going to provide the king simply because they had a promise. It is because now there is a particular now, we are moving away from Israel. We are narrowing to a tribe called the tribe of Judah. We are moving away from Judah. We are narrowing to who? To the house of? The house of David. Now we've identified, and what does he say? Okay, God, you need to say, I'll be his father and he shall be my son. God is saying, that son of David Will it be called the son of God? God, yeah. So it is giving us another way to look at it. The son of David will also be the son of God. Does Jesus fulfill that? Was he the son of God? Was he the son of David? I think the picture is developing clearer, right? Okay. If we commit iniquity, 
I will chasten him mm -hmm. with the rod of men mm -hmm. and with the stripes of the stripes of the children of men. This man looks like there is a place where he's going to commit iniquity and he's going to be done what? To be chastised. Do you know the iniquity that was on Jesus? Is the iniquity that God is talking about here. And he was he chastised? But my mercy will not leave. Read for another scripture. Okay. If we commit iniquity, I will, just, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. Wow, that's a promise. Yes. This man is going to be chastised. We realize the son of God is the son of David. Yes. But he's going to be chastised, but the mercy yeah. will remain. Amen. Shall not depart away from him. As I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. Mm -hmm. And thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. So there is an eternal throne promised to this son. But now when, uh, when Solomon came, he died. Rehoboam came, he died. Asa came, he died. Joshua came, he died. It was like... I think you remember in the book of John, when Jesus said, I'm going to die, they say, how is he going to die? We know that Christ abided for forever. They were actually right. They were reading this scripture. Amen. But now, the question would be, why do we call it the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven? When this man comes, he must bear the signs of the Messiah or the king. And that wouldn't be very far from what Gabriel told Mary. Gabriel told Mary, God shall give him the throne of his father, David. You remember in Matthew 23, Jesus asked the first question, whose son is the Messiah? Then they answered, he's the son of David. Then Jesus asked the question, how come, he was quoting Psalms chapter 110, how come that uh, David in the spirit, I love the Bible. How come David in the spirit said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit here on my right hand until I make thy enemy thy footstool. How is that? They never answered. But he was telling them the same son of David has to be exalted by God to sit on the right hand. What if I'm coming back to you? You know, we have to, to get to a place we introduce the second gospel and it's surprising and then we close there. But the other thing I wanted to, to say is this. I want to answer a question. Why is it called the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven? The answer is found in Daniel chapter 2. Do you have it here? Why is it called the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven? And remember, God had already told the children of Israel, you will reign over the nations. So if we made a statue, maybe something like a pyramid, who is supposed to be on top? Israel. Because you will be on top, you will be the head and not the tail. That was in Deuteronomy 28. So the nation of Israel is supposed to be on top. Is the nation of Israel the top of the nation? No. So there is no down of the kingdom. If you think you are in the kingdom today, then you must be living on the slum part of the kingdom. Amen. Isn't it? Yes. If the kingdom is present today, and you are where you are today, yes. you must be living on the side of the, the slum. Yes. And how would you be in the kingdom when the head is not yet there yet? Yeah. Yes. So read that scripture for us and then we say a few things. Okay. I want to just say two things here and then we take it back to you to okay. something else. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44 and it reads and in the days of this, these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Ha -ha. Does that go together with what he told David? Your kingdom will never have an end. But now he's saying God is going to set up that kingdom. kingdom. Uh -huh. We shall never be destroyed mm -hmm. and the kingdom shall not be left to another people. Ha -ha. Continue. Shall not be left to another people 
but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms uh -huh. and it shall stand forever it will stand forever now let's go back to that scripture right there there is a man called Nebuchadnezzar he has had a dream and in this dream he sees a big stature of a man and the stature is made of the head is gold the arms are of silver the chest is of brass the feet are of iron as you go down, the legs are of iron. As you go to the feet, you find there is now iron mixed with the clay. Then he sees a stone comes from there, from up. It smites the head, the, 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 the feet. I think so, right? And after smiting the feet, these other ones, it breaks the structure. Then some wind comes and it carries away the remains of this kingdom. And then the stone that came from heaven grows into a big kingdom and it fills the whole earth. And then the interpretation is the head of Nebuchadnezzar is you, gold. That was the kingdom. The second kingdom that followed was the metal passion. That was silver. The other kingdom that followed of brass was the Greeks, the Alexander. Then the other two that followed was the Romans. These were two legs. This is not two legs of Europe, uh, no. There are two legs in the same area where the <laughs> there is the dummy, right? Yeah. So these legs are coming from where the dummy was. So it is a certain region where Alexander was is where we are getting these two legs. The north and the south in the same place. And then the interpretation is a stone came coming means God of heaven shall set up a kingdom. So from that time it will be called the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God interchangeably used. So when Jesus Christ is born, the Magi are coming from the east saying, where is he born? The king of the Jews. They knew these people had a king coming. But when the king is coming, as brother Onesimus has told us, he's presenting special signs which these signs make the Jews to say, hey, this must be the one we are waiting for. I think there is a script that says, unless you believe I'm here. Yeah? Jesus knew who he was, right? Yeah. And uh, while that was happening, Jesus is going to present himself. Brother Onesimus, maybe when you are coming back, you will tell us a little bit more about uh, Jesus when he withdrew himself. He wasn't publicly coming to the people he was sent to. Hold that there. I'd say something, Brother Godfrey. Uh, my question to you as you think is, what gospel did the apostles preach? Were the apostles restricted like Jesus? And were they, were they preaching the same thing? We're just going one round and then we come back to the second gospel, then we close. There are a few things I'd put down here that I wanted you to, to look down. Jesus Christ said he came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What qualifies one to be an Israelite? Maybe someone wanted to answer from then you will just uh, you want to answer, someone answers and then he, he gives it, uh, what do you call this? He amplifies the voice. What qualifies one to be an Israelite? Circumcision. Wow, he has answered, so you don't have to answer. He's saying, circumcision. And that time, were, were the general circumcised? So he said, I've come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel. So that thing, Brother Godfrey, you're going to answer which, which gospel the apostles preach. But I want to read for you Romans 15, verse 8. We are still building number one. Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God. You know we are going back to the first scripture we read. Yes. That Paul said God committed to him the gospel of and circumcision but Peter, James and John the gospel of circumcision. But Romans 15, 8 tells us Jesus 
was the minister of circumcision. So Jesus in his flesh, we want to put Paul here. Right? And we put James, John, and Peter on one side. And we put Romans 15, 8. Jesus, the minister of circumcision. Where would Jesus go in the flesh? Oh, Brother Alexander is telling us, if Jesus was put here, and Paul here with the gospel of uncircumcision, Jesus would go <laughs> to where Peter, James, and John are. And there is no problem. Wow. But when he died, he must have crossed. Yes. No, did I go ahead of myself? Yeah. yeah. If he was in the flesh, he would have remained right here. Yes. He wouldn't help us. Yeah. We found in uh, Matthew 15 about the Syrophoenician woman. Because the Bible tells us Jesus' fame in Matthew 4 went up to Assyria. And this woman, Syrophoenician, is a woman from Syria, where the fame of Jesus had gone and she was also attracted. And she came like everyone. People are coming, going home with miracles. Let me also go. She's told, no. Number one, she's not a man, so we can't say, talk about circumcision. She's a Gentile. Jesus in the flesh did not come to us. He wouldn't help us. Amen. The news he had is for the people expecting it. Yeah. Then number two, the bread he had, we would be angry. If you get a gram, you would just go home and never complain and say the dog has eaten some gram. And it goes to show even this man who is giving the gospel of the kingdom as a gram, he's not so selfish. But I think if another time would come, he'd give himself to us as well. Because he has shown us, even if you people come, something can be done. So, Brother Godfrey, what gospel did the apostles preach and where do we find it in the scripture? Are they preaching the same gospel John, Jesus preached? Do you have a scripture for that? Okay, before, yeah, maybe yeah. to support what you're saying is this. In the book of Matthew, chapter 10, yeah. when Jesus is commissioning his disciples, he gives them clear instructions where to go and where not to go. Mm. Oh, how? And that one actually opens our eyes to tell us the audience of these people, the disciples uh -huh. that Jesus had. Mm. In the book of Matthew, chapter 10, yes. verse 5, yeah. it reads this. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Oh. So it goes to show Jesus with the twelve. The gospel of the kingdom was not for the Gentiles. Why do you think he, he called twelve? <laughs> because there are twelve tribes of the, son, the, the sons of Jacob were twelve. If I wasn't holding a mic, I would have clapped. <laughs> Let me just clap like this. He's saying, Jesus choosing the 12 apostles was not a convenient number. No. It is because there are 12 people out, 12 tribes are out there yes. that would be ministered. Yeah. So Godfrey, you've also raised something very important. Yeah. This woman would not even get anything. Yes. Because, because there are 12? 12, 12 tribes. There are 12 gates. There are 12... 12? 12, 12 manner of fruits. Now... I mean it. He's getting excited the way I am. Now I think we are going to have another panel where he will tell us why the new Jerusalem may not be ours because it has got how many 12? 12? Or we start making ourselves, we start friending some tribe if you want to go through Judah and Dan. Okay. okay. Tell us something more. So from Matthew 10, Ma Matthew 10, Clearly we are seeing Jesus commanding them not to go to the way of the Gentiles, Gentiles and Samaritans. Yeah. So you see, Jesus, that gospel is limited only to the lost sheep of the house of Amen. Israel. Amen. And there is no way, even, there, was, there is no hope for you a Gentile at that time. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it was the, the, the gospel that was being preached. And my opening remarks was... Mm. There were two kind of apostles. Uh -huh. The apostles of circumcision mm -hmm. 
and the apostles of all and circumcision. Right there is also he said there is the gospel of circumcision and the gospel of an so that obviously the question the person asked was it gives us how many salvation because the gospel of circumcision gives salvation the gospel of uncircumcision gives salvation yeah. continue brother Godfrey. okay we have seen what the 12 apostles were preaching it was the gospel of the kingdom and uh, just to open our eyes a little bit in yeah. the book of acts yes the book of acts chapter 17 or 16 mm -hmm. Acts chapter 16. Something happens uh, when Paul goes to Asia. The Holy Spirit forbids Paul from preaching, yet the other apostles, they preached to them that were in Asia. Acts chapter 16 verse 6. Wow. Read this. No, look here. Brother God is telling us there are two gospels yeah. where and there was a certain region. Yeah. So are you trying to tell us the gospel of the, the, the people preaching the gospel of circumcision yeah. went to a particular place they preached. Yes. And Paul went there and, and he was, was told not to preach. Not to preach. No, friends, I'm convinced there are two gospels. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because this Asia is where you'll find Paul sending in the book of Revelation. Those seven churches mm -hmm. in Asia Minor, mm -hmm. where Peter preaches to the strangers scattered, where? In Asia. The same place you'll find Peter addressing them, you'll find John. These are, they are addressing the people that were aware in Asia. These are their apostles of circumcision. But when Paul comes to that place, Acts chapter 16, verse 6. This is what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And when they had gone throughout Phagia and the region of Galatia mm -hmm. and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost this to, is preach, mm -hmm. to preach the word in Asia. Ha ha. The Holy Ghost is really orderly. Yes. And the places mentioned there are the places that Peter mentioned in 1 Peter, Peter. chapter 1 yes. verse 1. Mm -hmm. He writes to them but the Paul goes there. The Holy Spirit tells him no. But when he goes to Macedonia, God tells him, stay in this city of Macedonia. Yes. I've got great people right here. Yeah. But that place, don't. Yeah, don't. The Bible is meticulously put together. Yeah. Mm. Because what would wonder if what Paul preached was the same as what Peter and John preached? I Why want you, I want you to read there. I want you, we are coming there. Okay. Yeah. Brother Onesimus, we are remaining with um, 30 or 20 minutes. My time keep, is that okay? Yeah, we are remaining with the 25 minutes to wrap up the second gospel. Brother Godfrey, you are coming there. Where you are, I know where you are. We are going right there. So continue, brother. Brother, there's something you wanted to say? Come to brother and then I introduce this and then we wrap it up. Uh, there's a question uh, you had asked Godfrey. Yeah. If I'm to add on the same, yes. which I, I believe he was continuing on the same, is what the apostles preach. And uh, you know the time apostles... Had he really finished? He was building on the same. He was building on the same? Yeah. Oh, Godfrey, just finish that part. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, Onesimus, you can step in. Because I think I'm being pulled... To go somewhere. <laughs> somewhere oh so i was helping him <laughs> yeah, yeah. but he had begun very well yeah. so bring him back to the uh -huh. so godfrey began by showing you the region the apostles were sent wow and they were they were not supposed to go to where gentiles were are you like encouraging us to read james chapter 1 verse 1 first peter chapter 1 verse 1 uh -huh. because these are the same guys called the apostles of circumcision yes. so what region was this the regions you'll find them the salutations of the pistols, yeah, the Hebrew pistols. Go slowly. Let me read for you. John uh, first Peter one. First Peter one. Yeah, first Peter one you'll get the region that is specific for them. <laughs> James chapter one, you'll find also the regions that are specific. Yes. So let me are you together in first Peter? Yes. Let me read it for you. It says this Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia. Oh, oh, oh. Strangers can a gender call himself a stranger? No. 
These were the people who are scattered. Yes. Sister Esther somewhere. Sister Esther. You say that that is uh, Leviticus 16 verse? You don't remember. Mm -hmm. Or is it silent? Mm -hmm. Verse 36 or there about or 43. Mm -hmm. Where God promised to have them scattered. So the letters are following them where they are scattered. And Peter is writing to the, them. The strangers. Yes. They're also in Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, where we were. Where Brother Godfrey has read. Has read. They were scattered there. So Paul went there. Uh -huh. And the Holy Spirit told him, don't. Yes. Uh -huh. And Bithynia. And when you go to James, another apostle of the circumcision. James chapter 1, verse 1. Says, Jesus, a servant of God mm -hmm. and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. To the 12 tribes. To the 12 tribes. I didn't, we didn't, we didn't hear that. <laughs> and James to the 12 tribes. So, it, which are scattered abroad. So, James is writing to the 12 tribes. Yes. So, James, if he was there in Matthew chapter 10, you know, this James was not there in Matthew chapter 10. This is not the James, the brother of John. This James here is the brother of Jesus yes. and Jude. Yes. So if he was there in Matthew 10, he would have just fitted in. Because he's writing the 12 tribes. That means their gospel is the gospel of the kingdom. Yes. It is the gospel of circumcision. Yes. It is the salvation Israel has been waiting for. Continue. Don't, don't lose out. Yeah. So we realize now from the time when they are called apostles, they, were, they have graduated from being called disciples. Mm -hmm. Because an apostle is a person sent. Uh -huh. And when they were sent in Matthew 10, they were regions they were supposed to go to. So they were preaching, even they, at some point they stumbled over a demon, they could not cast it out. Mm -hmm. But it goes to show they were preaching. Yeah. But as pastor shared with us on Friday, they were not preaching the cross. Because the cross had not yet come yet. So, so where are we going? They were preaching. He has brought something very powerful there. Mm -hmm. They were preaching. In they the, were healing. Yes. They were resurrecting. Yes. But they are not preaching the cross. Yes. Because the cross had not taken place. Yet. So if there will be another gospel. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the cross. Yes. Let's find out where the cross is found. Yes. So they kept preaching even in Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. They are still preaching. Yeah. They are still preaching the same gospel. message. The same gospel. By the time even they are scattered by that that emperor Nero, they are still preaching the same gospel. Even at when they encountered Paul in that second council in Acts 15, mm -hmm. they were still quarreling on which gospel is true because another man had come with another gospel where pastor is going to take us there. But uh, what I'm trying to add on what God was saying, the apostles were sent, they had a message they were preaching, and that message was the kingdom has come. Jesus, the promised Messiah, has, has come. Yes. But you don't come and say, Jesus, the promised Messiah, has come. Let me jump ahead. You come and say, he died, was buried, and resurrected. There was no Messiah who was supposed to die, and but that was not the expectation at all. That's why the preaching was less the cross. Yours is full of the cross. Continue. So I think I, I, I'd, I'd leave it on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing that uh, we, we, we understand, what made it good news for them was not that the king was coming. They already knew the king was coming. From all the prophets, they always say the king was coming. But what made it a good news is that the king is here. Oh, the kingdom is going to be established. The kingdom is at hand. So that is what they ran from every village, preaching the kingdom is at hand. So I believe, I think if Godfrey you still have something to add on, I think I'll, I'll close there. Yeah, maybe I think to just to, to, to narrow down to or to elaborate a little bit yeah. what we've built to this time. We've clearly through the scriptures we see there are two kind of gospels, there are two kind of apostles, the apostle of circumcision and the apostles of uncircumcision. And uh, for us, maybe the issue our precious brother, Brother Nesmas has raised, this issue of the strangers scattered. There is a commission Jesus gives his disciples in the book of Matthew 28. Mm -hmm. He tells them, uh, Matthew chapter 28, Matthew 28, verse 18. 
how to, to do it. it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There is a commission he gives them. The same commission we find in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. He tells this, and this is after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you have to understand who was Jesus addressing even after his resurrection. He was still dealing with his 12 apostles. Aha. Uh-huh. After Jesus resurrected, yeah. he did not even come to the Gentiles. Yes. He was dealing with the Gentiles. Until the something happened. Yeah. And just, I want to give this to an to audience. The book of Acts is not about the beginning of the church, the body of Christ. But the entirety of the book of Acts, it is the fall of Israel as a nation. I just want to give you this, you meditate upon it as you go home. Many times we've thought Acts is the beginning of the church. But I want to challenge your thoughts. The book of Acts is actually the fall of Israel, the suspension of the gospel of the kingdom. Oh, so the gospel of the kingdom got to a place. God said, no, yeah. you can't continue with this gospel. Yeah, but what I was just trying to pull your attention to is in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. It reads, but he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Amen. And he shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Jerusalem and in all Judea, all Judea and in Samaria, Samaria and uttermost parts of the earth. The uttermost part of the earth. Yes. So this is what Jesus has given the, the twelve. And um, as uh, I wrap up my thought, I want to pull you to Acts chapter 8. This is after Stephen has been stoned. And there arose a persecution and you have to understand these guys have been given the commission of the gospel of the kingdom to take it to the world. Okay? Isn't it so? And something happens in the book of Acts chapter 8. Will you forget something? If you can just hold chapter 8. The same scripture you read us in Matthew chapter 10. What was the commission? Do not go. Do not go to the Gentiles and Samaritan. Do not go to Samaritan. Yeah. But the other scripture is reading, there is another commission now. Yeah. Which covers Jerusalem, Jerusalem Judea, Judea Samaria, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the world. Of, yeah. This word people use the great commission. Do you see why this is misplaced? Yes. They have to understand commissions, commissions up to what time. So the gospel of the grace of God must also have its commission as well. So Jesus has expanded. He has told them, I told you to go to Samaria, not to Samaria, to Israel only. But now after he died and resurrected, yeah. yes. Yes. he says now, you can now, now. Yeah, you can go to Judea, Samaria, and uttermost parts of the earth. Now this gospel that is going to these four places does not have the path of Jesus only. It is he died and resurrected. Yeah. And now you have to understand, they were in Matthew 28, they were told, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, baptizing them in the name of the Father, <laughs> the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I want to challenge you. Who are the people that are supposed to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? The Who nations. Nations, not individuals. You are not an in, a nation, you are an individual. But when we come... When we come here, you know, those are many thoughts that we can spend hours. No, you are okay. <laughs> you actually is encouraging you to have question this audience and yeah. the invisible audience. Yes, yes. One is, is it the name of Jesus or the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and to whom yeah. was this given? Yeah. Number two is the other thing you said. The church, the body of Christ, yeah. never began in the book of Acts. Yeah. That should be a question. Yes. So how many churches are there in the book of Acts. Acts. Because every gospel must produce a church. a church. So what I was saying in the book of Acts chapter 8 is this. The same apostles that Jesus gave the commission in Acts 1, 8, something happens when they rejected and they stoned Stephen. That's right. In chapter 8. In chapter 7. Mm-hmm. And before Stephen dies, Stephen walks Whatever he gave at a, as a testimony, as a witness, he was walking the history of Israel. Yeah. How God called Abraham. Mm-hmm. How he dealt them through Moses. All the way. And Stephen is bringing to their attention the things 
that the blessing that God was doing to the children of Israel. And when Stephen indicted them or yeah. provoked them, mm. how they reject they have always rejected the Holy Ghost. Like they are just like their fathers. And when he called them stiff naked and circumcised, you know, for a Jew to hear you are uncircumcised. Yeah. It's like an abuse. Yeah. That is why at that time, when Stephen mentioned that, they never, they stopped, their, the Bible says they stopped their ears. They blocked their ears. They blocked their ears. They didn't want to hear anything else. And they stoned Stephen and Stephen died. And I want you to see something. When Stephen dies, it's the death of the kingdom hope. Right. For these people. So the death of Stephen was not an ordinary death. Death. It was a sign in the calendar of yes. God yeah. as it pertains to dealing with the children the, of the kingdom. The children of the kingdom. And when you open the, the Bible and you read Acts chapter 8, the Bible says this. Now, there is the mention of Saul, who later became Paul. Okay? And Saul was consenting unto the death, unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. The Bible is very clear. The church that was at Jer Jerusalem. At this? Right, right there. Tom, we are coming back to you. You know, these guys are preachers. And uh, the anointing sometimes can make you stand up and shout, Hallelujah, when we wanted to sit. Uh, we have enjoyed what Brother Godfrey has said. He has told us the death of Stephen was not ordinary. When you go home, you do not just summon people are stoning. Stephen was a sign on the calendar. The people called the children of the kingdom. Don't just call yourself the children of the kingdom. Which kingdom? You are never promised a kingdom. Yet at the same time, you belong to a kingdom. But now we are dealing with the gospel of the kingdom. Brother Tom, we are coming to you. I read Acts chapter 20 verse 24. Then we wrap up. Yes, thank you. Uh, my brothers have said it all. But I just want to finish the scripture that you read in Romans 15, verse 8. Yes. You, you read up to the truth of God. Yes. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of, this, of the circumcision for the truth of God. <laughs> That's where you stopped. Mm. But then when we continue, it says to confirm <laughs> the promises Amen. made unto the fathers. My goodness, thank you. So if it is the promises made unto the fathers, we read some scriptures he read in Samuel. Yeah. We read scriptures in Deuteronomy. Yeah. Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. Those are the fathers. The fathers, yeah. Where well, those promises were oh. made. You know. And when Jesus is coming after so many years, yes, thank God. He has to remember the promises. Uh -huh. And that's why he couldn't step out of the boundary. Mm -hmm. And then the gospel that he had to preach was to confirm this very one. And that's why it came to only the circumcised, of the yeah. circumcised people. Yeah. And then if we go again to the book of uh, John, there is something interesting in John there. Yes. If we read the book of John from verse 1, and then we continue, but we, let's jump to verse 10, or uh -huh. verse 8. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, verse 6. Yeah. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Uh -huh. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was a sent to bear witness of that light. Yeah. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh unto the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. It's not a very serious statement. Yeah. He was in the world, mm -hmm. and the world was made by him, mm -hmm. and the world knew, knew him, him not. not. But verse 11, yes. he came unto his own, mm -hmm. and his own received him not. not. You see? He's coming to the world. I don't know. Kenya was there. I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> it was bush and forest. Bush and forest and so forth. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But now the scripture is separating and drawing emphasis. 
in verse 11, that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Because there were promises, which yeah. was tagged to his own. Yeah. And that's why when he came, he expected that his own would know him and receive yeah. him. And that's why when he came and he was preaching, he never went anywhere. Yeah. He was just rotating within the same place. Yes. Can you imagine from when he was 12 years, when he went to the temple? Amen. Mm -hmm. When he began now to reason like somebody old enough, mature, from 12, mm -hmm. he was rotating there 13 years, 14, 15, 20, 21, 20. He was not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Rotating just within the same place so that they may be able to know him. Yes. But still, Take they it. failed to know him. And he concentrated on the gospel of the of the kingdom. So that gospel was totally different from our gospel. Because if it was the same, why did he waste all his, all these years in one place? Uh -huh. He would have moved to another place. Yes, and if preach to us, it was a general gospel. A general gospel. That's right. He would have moved to the Gentile world and preached the general the same gospel, and maybe would have believed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Or not, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. But he concentrated in one place. Because it was promised to them That's right. to come and build a kingdom. So I just wanted to add something. Thank you. Them. Thank you. Yes. Are you done? I'm done. Okay, let's go to the book of uh, Acts chapter 20 verse 24. And then let's begin. Uh, let's put, put your finger in Galatians chapter 2 verse 1. Go to read for, the, for us Galatians. But uh, I want to first of all read Acts chapter 20, 20 verse 24. Paul is being threatened that if you go to Jerusalem, they will kill you. They'll do sorts of things to you. Then Paul says something that defines the word, the gospel that was never in Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 24. The gospel of the kingdom. He is now going to add something there that wasn't there. It says this. Paul is refuting the person who is threatening that you are going to die. He says this. But none of these things move me. Neither can count I my life dear unto myself. So that I might finish my course with the joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord. To testify of the gospel of the grace of God. Now the gospel, the good news <laughs> is earning another name. It's no longer the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus preached, the one the apostles preached, the one John preached, but it's now another gospel called the gospel of the grace of God. That in itself has the calling of Paul. Paul repeated his calling over and over again because it was something very spectacular. You know some of the things that happened in your life and uh, you sort of recite it to a person. You tell this person even three times until he tells you, hey, you already told me. You know it means so much to you until you want to repeat it over and over again. Paul did that anytime. Anytime before Festus, before Felix, before Agrippa. My road to Damascus, something happened to me. Road to Damascus, something happened to me. What happened to Paul? I have called you from the Gentiles to whom I send you to open their eyes that they might be received an inheritance in me among those that are sanctified. That's what now Paul is calling the gospel of the grace of God. I want to call your attention to something. Because what our brother Godfrey talked about, the 12 apostles. These 12 apostles, the moment Judas Iscariot died, they hurried very fast in Acts chapter 1 to have someone to replace him called Matthias. Because the number was supposed to be 12. But in the preceding scriptures, when they killed James, the brother of John, they never replaced him. Because also the apostles realized the gospel of the kingdom has come to a close. And that's why Brother Godfrey is telling us that Acts chapter 7, Stephen is killed. Acts chapter 8, the gospel 
still of the kingdom, is going to Samaria. You remember John Wendy and Peter. Acts chapter 9, Paul is done what? He's converted. Acts chapter 10, God gives Peter a vision he's never had before. He sees heaven open and a sheet of unclean animal that were not supposed to be sacrificed or eaten according to Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14. Crocodiles, animals that don't do the God. Then God tells him, do what? <laughs> Kill and eat. And Simon Peter is like, me? I've never eaten what is unclean. This is happening when a man who was half a gender and half a Jew, Cornelius, who was a converted Jew, converted gender to their religion. That was the only place you could get a blessing is to convert their religion. You've not been converted to the religion of Israel. That's why Christianity is not the religion of Israel. Amen. It's not. Amen. This is something else. They even rejected. So this man Cornelius is praying and is connected to Israel. Then God tells him, go send for someone called Peter. Now he didn't say go call for Paul. Because this was not a Gentile in the sense of the word. He was a converted or a proselyte Gentile who has become a Jew like who? Bathsheba, Rahab, Ruth, Caleb, Tama, and the centurion. This is not this kind of a person. If it was a gender like you and me, Cornelius would have been told, go call Paul, because you are a Gentile. But because you subscribe to the religion of Israel, call Peter. At the same time, Peter is having a dream. Two, three times, a vision. Then three people are knocking at his gate. Then he goes to the house of Cornelius. Chapter 10, verse 28, he says, You brothers know very well why it's not lawful for him that is a Jew to keep the company with him that is not a Jew. But God has told me not to call anyone unclean. So Peter is actually identifying the unclean animal was people. Right? But God is telling him, why do you call what I've sanctified unclean? Can you imagine the sanctification of these Gentiles was so sacred that even Peter with the keys did not know. Amen. But Paul knew. Amen. Because Paul in Acts chapter 9 receives a commission. I want to tell you, this may look controversial. To me, that is the great commission. Amen. Not Matthew 10, not Matthew 28, but Acts chapter 9, the great commission. Because now a new people who are down there seated as dogs have been elevated. Amen. And since that time when Paul came, he wrote nine letters from Romans to Philemon. Now the question you want to ask is, does it mean the, other, the others are irrelevant? They are not irrelevant. They are very relevant. Amen. But here is the thing. In the second team of the Bible says, every scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Every scripture from Genesis to Revelation has the inspiration of God. But the four things are presented, which Paul says, and it's profitable. For what? For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. So all those letters in the Bible and the scriptures are profitable, but not for doctrine. Some are for instruction. Some are for edification. Some are for correction and reproof. But for doctrine, it is the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. Where you are only saved by grace, not by keeping a commandment. Amen. So Jesus' as brother, to, uh, we are winding up now. Yeah, we are remaining with six minutes. That's good. You'll say one word, one word, one word in these four, six minutes. And I can hear you saying, and you're saying this, yeah. Now, while we are looking at all that, the question that one wants to ask, did Paul preach the, king, the, the kingdom? The answer is this. Paul did not preach the gospel of the kingdom, but he taught the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Teaching was necessary 
to Israel to tell them this is where you are coming from. He had even to quote the Old Testament. He was teaching them how they are coming. But he wasn't preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He was preaching the gospel of the grace of God. No person in the Bible refers to the kingdom like Paul. James, John, and Peter put together. They don't use the word the kingdom like Paul did it. Paul used it to teach them their history and to tell the Gentiles, you that were not a people during the time of the gospel of the kingdom have now come in. Don't keep days. Don't keep the Sabbath. Don't keep covenant. You keep the grace of God. Amen. So it is very true that the gospel is true. Amen. Now, finally, before I give them one minute, one minute to wind up is... Will the gospel of the kingdom be preached? Give us Colossians chapter 2. We see whether Peter, James, and John agreed that Paul preached a different gospel and whether they <laughs> refuted, refused him, or they allowed him. You know, that's the question number one. Read for us. Okay, Galatians chapter 2. Verse um... Just chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 1. Let's begin there. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem yeah. and with bad numbers and took titles with me also. Mm -hmm. And I went up by revelation and, I come and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. Paul went and met his brothers 14 years later yes. and told them, this is what I'm preaching to the Gentiles. Amen. You remember that? Yes. He told them what he was preaching to the Gentiles. Yes. Mm -hmm. But privately to them, which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Mm -hmm. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And, the, and that because of false brethren and unwares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. These are not brothers of a false doctrine. No. They are brothers of the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom yes. that have forced Paul to circumcise Timothy. Amen. And then Paul circumcised Timothy. Yes. They also wanted Paul to circumcise Titus and Paul refused. Yes. Then in the same book he says, circumcision availeth nothing, nothing. but the new creation. Amen. Mm -hmm. To whom we, have, we gave place by subjection? No. Not for an hour, mm. that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Mm -hmm. But of those, but of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. Paul is identifying among these brothers, some of them who appear to be pillars. Yes. But he says, they didn't matter to him. Yes. God accepted no man's person. Uh -huh. For they who seem to be somewhat uh -huh. in conference uh -huh. added nothing to me. He are saying, Peter, James, and John with the keys. Yes. They never added anything to Paul. Amen. So Paul had something complete. Yes. If another person comes to add, it becomes a problem. Yeah. yeah? But contrawise, when they contrawise, when they saw that when the gospel, they saw, when they saw that the gospel on, of uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto Peter. Yes. For he that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, Amen. the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. God was mighty in two ways. To Peter and to Paul. To circumcision and uncircumcision. Amen. Mm -hmm. And when James, Cephas, and John, James, Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. My brothers, we need to see that grace. <laughs> Peter, James, and John saw special grace. Yes. To go and do things that they couldn't do. Yes. They gave to me and Barnabas the right, right hand of fellowship that we should go under the heathens. And ah, ah, no, no. Read properly. That they should, not we should. That they gave to me and Barnabas uh -huh. the right hand of fellowship. That? That we should go unto the heathens. Yes. And they unto the circumcision. Do you see the division of the gospel? Amen. They have agreed. Paul, go to the heathen. We go to the children of Israel. And it is supported by the letters they wrote. 
That letter of Peter 1, 2, 3, James, is only good for instruction, reproof, but not for doctrine. Because we have agreed. Thank you, Brother Godfrey. Brother Nesmas, one minute. Can I borrow you a minute? I borrow you by asking you to read Matthew 24, verse 14. Because Paul, uh, brother said that uh, the gospel of the kingdom was suspended. Do you still maintain that? Yeah. He maintains it was suspended. Yes. Will it ever be preached again? Yes. If you read for us. Matthew 24 from verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all a the minute, world. A minute. My time, my timekeeper says five minutes, not one. Okay, thank you. And Tom, five minutes. Godfrey, five minutes. Then we finish. That's my timekeeper. <laughs> and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. Wow. Yeah. So there is a promise of the gospel of the kingdom to be preached. Now listen how it's going to be. Initially in Matthew 10, don't go to Samaritan or Gentiles. Right? Then Matthew 28, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and Adam was part. But it was suspended because Simon Peter, he says, it's not lawful. How else? And you'll tell us that. They never left uh, the city. Remember to tell us that part in your five minutes. Remember, he's now saying, when it comes to the end, the end of the world will come after the gospel has been preached, not in Judea, but to all the nations. Who will preach the gospel to all the nations? The same people that had the mandate to preach it. So when I live here, our pastor has come from Uganda. When Pastor Tom, when you go back to Uganda, don't say I'm fulfilling Matthew 28, I preach to the nation of Kenya. You didn't preach to Kenya. Even the president doesn't know you are here. You preach to the saints and to the sinners. But the people can preach to the nation is a nation. Then the end will come. That is not your end. You'll have already been raptured. Brother, your five minutes not going to be interfered with freely. Brother Tom, freely. Freely, and then I'll just pray. Okay. Is it work? So uh, as, 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 the, as, the, as we began, we realized we were talking about two salvations and the two gospels. And as through the scriptures that we've read, we've realized that uh, there are two gospels. We've realized uh, good news, as uh, Brother Tom illustrated. It was something the Jews were expecting it. And as Pastor has read for us in Acts chapter 20 from verse 24, it reached a season that uh, it was called uh, another gospel came. That, yeah, uh, note that this one changed the yeah, name. A new one came. Yeah, another one came, which is called the gospel of the grace of God. And today in 2024, Four. Mm. in March, no, yeah, in March, the last day, there is one gospel that is active. So my, my final or my final remarks. One gospel that is active. active. But when you read your Bible, you'll find two gospels. Just like in the Garden of Eden, there were two laws, but there was one that was dormant until it was activated, mm -hmm. which was the law of death and there was the law of life. You remember that? No, so, you will come here and tell us I'm more about that. that. Thank I'm you. finishing with that. <laughs> so there was death existed, mm -hmm. but it was dormant. Mm -hmm. Just like today, there is the gospel of the kingdom. It is dormant until that future time when that gospel is going to be preached. But when you read your Bible, there are scriptures about the gospel of the kingdom. But it is for the audience, Jewish audience, in the future. But for us today, as the members of the body of Christ, there is no Jew. There is no Gentile. There is no one that is a Jewish Christian or, a, or, a, or, a, or, a, or an African Christian. Uh -huh. We are all the same. Mm -hmm. There is no male. There is no female. Mm -hmm. So as we are one in Christ Jesus, that is the one faith that we have in. But uh, as we close in, we realize there are two Gospels. Yes. There are two salvations. Mm -hmm. But there is one that belongs to us and to everyone in the world as far as 2024 is yes. concerned. Amen. Thank you. Brother Tom, your five minutes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it has been a lively discussion. And uh, I hope 
those who are viewing us online must have been enjoying. You know, we have been uh, confused all through the years by replacement theology. Uh -huh. And because of replacement theology, which has been practiced by almost every denomination or any group of people that come by, and that's why we find ourselves get confused and we try to mix these things. But uh, when you look at the two Gospels, as we have been discussing here, the Gospel of the Kingdom and the Gospel of the Grace of God, they are two different Gospels. Oh. There, two, there is no even question about it. It's just because we have not been keen in doing our studies very well. Because if you look at Galatians 1, 8, yeah. which people have always been saying, let me read it there. It says, but though we or an angel from heaven preach another gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. And you know, people have been saying that is a false gospel. It's not. That when you come and preach another false gospel, then be a curse. No, Paul was referring mm -hmm. to the gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That now the dispensation has changed. Yes. The gospel of the kingdom has been suspended. Yes. yes. Now this is a new gospel that I have brought, which God has given me, I've brought it to you. Mm -hmm. So don't bring the other gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that's when the, the, the pastor here read several scriptures, when he withstood all those who are trying to bring in the other old gospel, gospel of the circumcision. Mm -hmm. And that's why when uh, the issues of circumcision arose, when they brought uh, who? Uh, Timothy. And Timothy circumcised him on condition because Timothy was half Jew and half uh, Gentile. Gentile. Mm -hmm. At least he gave some bit of room. Mm. But when it came to Titus, who was a pure Gentile, yeah. Paul said, no, no. way. <laughs> this one I cannot accept. Mm. I cannot circumcise this one here. So we find here that surely these two Gospels do exist. The one which is supposed to bring the children of Israel back yeah. is only suspended. And it's for a reason. Mm. So that you and I can be able to come in. Mm -hmm. Because for us, we did not know God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We didn't know God. Amen. We were heathens. We were worshipping whatsoever we worship. We placed anything before us and we bowed down to it to worship all sorts of idols. We didn't know God. And if God had come to us by the strict commandments like to the children of Israel, we would all fail. That is the reason why, why Peter with food, Paul with food Peter. Yes. So he had to give us a special message, a message of grace Amen. that can bring us in. Mm. And definitely that has been what has hold, held us up to now. And uh, I pray for those who are here and those who are, who are watching us online that this grace that God has given unto us is the grace that will hold us up to the end. We, we have nothing to do. Amen. Because what are we going to do that is going to please God, the God whom we never knew. But God rich in mercy has reached out to us and has given us a gospel that when we hold on to that, it will take us through. I want to thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Godfrey. Okay. I just want to appreciate God for this moment, a moment whereby we bring out scriptures and the scripture can answer any question that comes to the mind of the people. But uh, I'm closing by saying this. Paul told Timothy in the book of 2 Timothy 2.15, yes. study mm -hmm. to show thyself approved unto God, yes. a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. truth. There are no errors in the Bible, but you have to rightly divide the word of truth. What is true to Israel is not true to the Gentiles. Or what is true to Israel will not be true to the body of Christ. But it is all in the Bible, it is all the word of God. And just to wind up what I was sharing on, in the book of Acts, I'm closing in the book of Acts chapter 8. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand, even Paul never preached in Jerusalem. Is it so? Because when you read Acts chapter 22, verse 18, Jesus appears to Paul in a trance and tells Paul, make haste and get out, out get thee quickly out of Jerusalem mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for they will not receive they will not receive thy testimony thy testimony concerning me 
That's powerful, right? That is, that is Jesus speaking to Paul that get the quickly out of Jerusalem. They won't receive you. They won't receive the testimony, your testimony concerning me. Oh God. So those are two gospels. Those are your two apostles, the apostle of circumcision, apostle of uncircumcision. And when you look at Acts chapter, this is Acts chapter 22, verse 18. Acts 22, 18. Mm -hmm. Let me read verse 17 says, And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. And I saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. That is Paul. So what I, what I was saying in the book of Acts chapter 8 is this. The same apostles of circumcision that were given the commission of the gospel of the kingdom to preach to nations beginning in Jerusalem and to the uttermost parts, these people, they never left Jerusalem when the persecution arose. So I want to ask you a question as I wonder. If the people that were given the commission to preach to the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, never left Jerusalem because Jerusalem never received that commission. So who are you and me to say we are preaching the gospel of the kingdom? I wind up. Thank you. My visible audience, could you just clap for these brothers? <laughs> I just want to, to say that I'm so grateful for these brothers and their input. Uh, these are men of God who are really studying the scriptures very well. What Brother Godfrey has referred to by saying they did not leave Jerusalem. Is it in uh, Acts 8, Acts 11? It says, and the apostles remained in Jerusalem. Those who were scattered went out, but this one remained in Jerusalem. Why did they remain and they had been called to go and preach around the world? They understood it has been suspended. And this, if the gospel of the kingdom is effective today, you, 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 we don't want to use idle words. Just using it because I'm a child of the kingdom. When you come to the tares and the wheat, Jesus said, the wheat is the children of the kingdom. You are not no wheat. You are not a wheat anyway. You are the body of Christ. And Jesus Christ is the head of the body, but the king of Israel who is going to come. So the one that will be the coming king of Israel is already the head of the body. And if you are in the kingdom, if you think the kingdom called you, then you are in the slum area of the kingdom. That we are now in the kingdom, we are preaching the kingdom. We are not preaching the kingdom, we are preaching the grace of God. And the grace of God is, let no man judge you because of days, new moon, Sabbath. Why are we here on a Sunday? In fact, the Romans called it a Sunday. It's not a Sunday. It's the first day of the week. But if it was possible, we would be here tomorrow and the day after. Then Paul says, some people esteem one day above the other. But in Christ, there is no Jew. There is no Gentile. There is no slave. There is no master. There is no woman. There is no man. But when the gospel of the kingdom will resume, God tells them, there are people among you who call themselves Jews and they are not. They will persecute you in the synagogue. We don't have synagogue. We don't even have temple. It doesn't matter you come and say we are called the eternal light temple. We can't be a temple. Temple is Jewish. When the Bible says the Antichrist will sit in the temple, it won't be a church. It will be in Jerusalem. I want to thank you all of you for the work and for the participation. This is only the beginning of many discussion that will come in future. Do you think we need to get a question from one of you? A question that can only take two or three minutes to answer, but we are promising you this is not the end of our discussion. We shall still come back with the same subject, part two, to go a slightly deeper and repeat ourselves for other people as well. Do you have a person there that has a question? We see whether we can answer it today 
or we can uh, defer for another meeting. Thank you. There's a question for our sister there, Esther. Just ask in whichever language. We shall pick it up here. Kwanini Petro alibatiza katika jina la Yesu. The sister is asking the question. Why did Peter in the book of Acts chapter 2 baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? I want to answer that question in two minutes, but it will take it will even bother something called new creature versus new birth. It will go to Exodus 27, Exodus 30, Isaiah 54, Jeremiah 31, Ezekiel 36, John 2. But we can't go there. We just want to ask a question. The sister is asking a question. Why did Simon Peter baptize in the name of Jesus while in Matthew 28, 19, they were told, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Did Simon Peter disobey? That's a very controversial question. Because we don't take all the details. When Jesus said, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, it was, number one, go to the nations. Which means, go with the gospel of the kingdom. Those that believe, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Did these people know their Father? Did they know their Son? Did they know the Holy Ghost? The genders didn't know. But when he comes to Acts chapter 2, he tells them, men and brethren. Whom was he preaching to? Jesus. To the Jews who had come from Bithynia, Cappadocia, and all Patiamas, and Medes, and Persia. When they had come for the feast of Pentecost. That's why we say we are not a Pentecostal church. You know why? Pentecost was their fourth feast. That God told them, come and appear before God in the feast of unleavened bread, Pentecost and the tabernacle. According to Leviticus 23. So they had just come to obey the commandment. And then the Holy Spirit came. So the people who were in the upper chamber who were not Gentiles. The people in the upper chamber were Jews. Amen. The apostles. Those who came for the feast of Pentecost were not the Gentiles. Were Israel. And Israel already knew the Father. But they had rejected the Son. Now repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Right? Because you people already know the Father. But you have rejected the son, repent and be baptized in that name. But when the time of the nation comes, they must be taught about the father. They must be taught about the son. They must be taught about the Holy Spirit. That one brings another question, which you are not going to deal with today. But I want to finally say this. People say that Jesus Christ when he told them to, to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, he meant Jesus. You are wrong. Here is one reason why you are wrong. In Acts, in Matthew chapter 12, when Jesus spoke to them, they rejected him. In Matthew chapter 13, he spoke to them in parables. And the disciples asked him, why do you speak to them in parables, but you speak to us plainly? Then Jesus said, to them, I will speak in parables, to fulfill the blindness that was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 6 when he came out of the vision. He spoke about a blindness. He said, the hearing they will hear and not understand. Seeing they will see, but not perceive. But to you, it is given to understand the secrets of the mysteries of the kingdom. Would Jesus come in Matthew 28? Where even Judas Iscariot has left, and the only eleven, and still speaks in parables of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. If he did, if he meant Jesus, but he spoke Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, then he will have broken what he said to them. He spoke plainly. So to the disciples, when he said baptize in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, he didn't mean Jesus. He meant Father, Son, and Holy Ghost to the nations. 
and then Jesus to the Jews. To you? Another time. When Paul says in the book of Ephesians, one faith, one baptism, you have to understand what baptism is Paul referring to. The Bible says they were baptized in a cloud. So there was a baptism where they were baptized in a cloud. The Bible talks about the baptism of death. The Bible talks about the baptism of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Bible talks about the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then the Bible talks about the baptism of fire. Which one Paul meant when he wrote to the Ephesians, there is one faith, one Lord, and one baptism. If you think it's the baptism of water, why not the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Thank you. God bless you. We've come to an end. I think it has been a really, really great time for us. This was not supposed to be our meeting. It was the mo supposed to be the meeting of our brother Tom. But because we are full of brotherly love, we said we want to share among the ministers right here. And uh, this is the thing that we shall be doing over and over again. God bless you. Shalom. Okay. Kama wamemaliza, nimesema asante. Ningependa kutambua uwepu wa ndugu wa Mwenye Ben anamfata Ben hako na ondugu wake sasa watatu hapa Kuna moda ndio Shadrach